So we're going to look at my old Panasonic LX101 Laserdisc player. Now this player was given to me. It was my brother-in-law's before he moved to Australia. So he gave it to me when he moved. I have not used this unit in probably 25 years. So I don't even know what's going to happen when I plug it in. It might go boom. Let's try it out. So I've got here a Panasonic. This is a Laserdisc player, which was the best quality video playback device that you could get prior to DVD. And many would argue, it even after DVD came out, that this was still a better quality uh, picture because it was an analog recording and therefore no compression. So there's many people that feel that Laserdisc had a better picture in the standard definition era until we got Blu-ray discs. This is an old Panasonic. This one is a model number uh, LX101. It features a digital time-based corrector and a three-line digital YC processing. This one has an S-video output, which doesn't really do much because it still starts out as a composite signal to begin with. Don't know whether this thing works. It has not been turned on in eons. I get the sneaking suspicion it probably does not work. Is it plugged in? Oh, it might help if I put the power cord in, right? Yeah, my things might might actually turn on if I plug it in. Okay, now I've got a blue screen. Will it open? Unbelievable, it actually opens. <laughs> the belts aren't shot in it. I wonder if it's gonna even play. This is a promotional disc. It's a, a, a dual-sided disc. And Sony put this disc out to show off the difference between the different features that you could um, have depending on how the disc was recorded. If we look at the disc, there was two ways of recording laser discs. One of the modes was CAV, which stood for constant angular velocity, and the other one was CLV constant linear velocity. Can you tell the difference between the two? You should be able to see the difference on camera. Do you see the difference? I can see the difference right now. This is a CAV disc that we're looking at. Maybe if I throw some more direct light at it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Probably better without it. See this? This is your vertical sync. So each rotation of the disc was two fields. So one full frame. It takes two fields to make up a frame. So 262 and a half lines, 262 and a half lines. If we zoom in, you can actually see the lines of information. Pretty neat, huh? So these are all the equalizing pulses. That would be the retrace, the black bar, when you roll down your vertical hold. And then you've got your first series of test signals and stuff, and then each frame, each line. Each one of these is a line. And if we were to count them all, there would be 262 lines as the disc rotates. So each one of these little packets, each one of these little bursts, each one of these between the lines here, that's one line of video. And then as it rotates to get to the bottom of the frame, here's the, the last line, or is that over here? I think it's over here. You get some equalizing pulses, at the black at the bottom, and then there's the, the sync pulses, and then we start at the top again. Top of the frame, bottom of the frame. That's the way it is, because if the laser was reading from the top, it would be rotating counterclockwise. So the laser would be reading in this direction. Right, so top of the frame, towards me. This is the top, start of the frame, the end of the frame. Each line starts out in the middle, and it works its way out. As you move out, this is the end of the recording here. You can see where the, the, end, the recording has ended and everything beyond here is just black. That's the CAV side. 
CAV constant angular velocity allowed for perfect freeze frame, perfect slow-mo, because you would just stop the laser and it would just continue to trace over the same track over and over and over and over again. The other side of the disc, this is the CLV side. And you can see it starting out here right at the beginning. I know it says CAV, but you remember it plays from the bottom. So the CAV is the other side. This is the CLV side. The very first few frames, it starts out as a CAV. This is to get everything synchronized. So when the laser first reads, it reads the information at the beginning of the disc, and this is where it tells the player, hey, this is going to be a CLV or a constant linear velocity, which means that as the disc starts to rotate and as the laser starts to move out, because the disc is becoming physically larger in circumference, the disc starts to slow down. And you'll see here, you see, you can see the frames no longer line up as we're moving out from the beginning. Everything starts to shift because it starts to slow down. Starts out at 1800 RPM and starts to slow down as it gets closer to the outside edge. So what that meant was that unless you had a player that had specific digital memory where it could store an entire frame, some of the pioneers would do that. When you entered pause or you tried to search forward, well, you, you couldn't get a clear freeze frame. You could search forward but and search backwards, but if you tried to get a clear freeze frame, you couldn't. You just got a blank screen, basically a blue screen. You might wonder, why did we have two different formats? Why did we have CAV and CLV? Well, CAV was the first format for LaserDisc. And you got an excellent picture and you got all the excellent cool special effects but the recording time was limited to 30 minutes which meant that if you had a two-hour movie you would get it on two discs and these discs were expensive to manufacture so they developed the CLV speed which then doubled the recording time to 60 minutes therefore a two-hour movie could be produced and put on one disc and that's really the difference a lot of movies there was two versions of the movie released. There was the CLV version, and then they had the special director's cut, which was put out in a CAV format because you'd get the film buffs and the film nerds that would sit there and they would advance one frame at a time and they would analyze everything in a picture. And, and I'm, no, I'm not kidding. People did that. The, the laser nuts out there would buy the, the $200 CAV release and sit and watch and try to figure out what the director was doing and what they were doing when they were editing. And especially for films like Star Wars and stuff that had special effects. I got a bunch of discs. I, 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 I inherited a whole bunch of discs, basically. My um, my neighbor, he was a... say was because he passed away in his 30s from cancer. Probably from sitting in front of his silicon graphics monitors when he was working for Disney and working on films such as Toy Story and Finding Nemo and stuff, but apparently a bunch of people on his crew all developed strange cancers. And you gotta you gotta wonder, is it was it because they were sitting in front of those high res silicon graphic monitors for eighteen hours a day? It makes you think. But he was a film buff and of course was an animator, and uh, he bought a lot of movies. And um, when he passed away, his parents lived up the street from me. They thought of me. They said, here, you can have his collection of movies because we're just going to throw them out. So I've got hundreds of movies on laser that I've never watched. And uh, I've got some good concerts, too. I got lots of good concerts, but I collected the concerts. But he had a good collection of, of concerts, too, including the three Beatles films, Hard Day's Night, Help, and the animated Yellow Submarine. I have those on laser. So, I try to keep my laser disc players working just so that if I want to hollow out a laser, I can. Let's see if this one's going to work tonight. If not, can we get it to run? Now this was, this player was actually my brother-in-law's player and when he immigrated to Australia, he couldn't take it with him so he just gave it to me and it's been sitting for probably 20 years, if not more, and has not been touched. So. So I don't know if it plays. I don't think I've ever tried this thing since I got it. We'll find out whether it actually plays. 
or whether it doesn't. So it's going to spin up. This is the CAV version. Look at that. It plays. This thing is old. It's been sitting around for years. And this laser disc player, it plays. And I'm going to have to kill the sound because I, I know that they're going to use music on here, I'm sure. So I'll have to uh, mute that sound here somehow. But look at that picture. I mean, that's got a great picture. Yeah, it's standard definition. This disc is... What year was this disc? I'm going to look and see if there's a year on this. 1989 is when this disc was produced and released. So this disc is 33 years old. And it still plays. Being CAV... Whoop! Is this the CAV or CLV? Is this the CAV side? Why can I not get freeze frame? That's weird. I believe that feature is only available using the remote control. They can do freeze frame and still advance and slow mo from the remote, but not from the front. Well, back. that is bizarre. I should be able to get freeze frame on this thing. I can get uh, I can get search probably get away with the sound because they got lots of noise in the background. Anyway, this thing works. Amazing. I was certain that I was going to have to do something like change a belt at least. Because this player is you know, from the 1980s. This player was probably from about 1989 or 1990. I'll flip this over and just put the other side on. And look at the CLV side. gonna have the same content on it but this is with the CLV speed which doesn't have freeze frame but for some reason this player is not giving me freeze frame you'll notice that when I do the search it's a little different right it's more of a staggered search on CLV discs as opposed to a rapid search. This may have freeze frame, it may only do it from the remote control and not the pause button on the unit itself. Anyway, let's take this thing apart. As you can see, there's a lot of analog adjustments in here for adjusting the tilt and the, uh, the balance, the tilt, because the laser itself not only focuses up and down and side to side, but there's also a tilt tilt it back and forth uh, on the the actual mechanism itself a lot more adjustments are required to play these large discs just because of the large physical size but they, this player not only plays laser discs it will also play compact disc and it also it will also play what's called a CD video and I have a CD video I just got to go find it we'll, we'll play that if I can find one and some people don't know what a CD video is. So we'll go into that in a minute, but I gotta go find it. I've got two. I've got one, it's a music video, David Bowie, Ashes to Ashes. 
obviously can't play that. But I can play, actually I have three. I've got Robert Cray Band as well. And I've got one called Flight of the Dream Team. And I, I probably can play that one. It's just a skydiving video. But what a what a CD video, not a video CD, but what a CD video was, was it was 20 minutes of music and up to a five minute music video. The 20 minutes of music were encoded as just a regular CD. So any CD player could play them. And of course the CD player portion of this could play it. And the CD video was an analog recording on the outside edge of a, a standard CD size disc. But it was analog recorded on it. And I've got to say, I've got three of them. I just gotta, I gotta try to locate them. So this is what I was talking about right here. This looks like a regular CD, but it's actually a CD video. You'll see that it has four songs on it and a music video. And if we look at this disc, it looks totally different. The video portion is out here. The audio portion is in the middle of the disc. And this will, if you put this in a, a DVD player, for example, or a CD player, it's only going to play the audio. It will not play the video. The video only plays in a CD video player. I almost said video CD, but video CD is a completely different format. Video CD or VCD was digital video recorded on a regular CD or CDR. And you could get 74 minutes just like a CD. This is five minutes and it's analog video and you can see the analog video right here. If I open this up and put this disc in, It goes right to track number five. Track number five is the music video. And that is that. If I change tracks, now it goes down to the music portion. And it's just the music. This would play in a regular CD player. And then track five. That is a CD video. I've got a couple. Uh, I've got uh, David Bowie Ashes to Ashes, which came bundled with the uh, it was a Sound and Vision box set. I used to be a Bowie fan, and I got sucked into buying that box set. <laughs> I don't think I've listened to it more than once. But it, it came with a bonus video CD of Ashes to Ashes. And our yeah, CD video. I called it a video CD. It came with a bonus CD video, Ashes to Ashes. And uh, I bought this one. Uh, more, more for the sound, for the music. Because it was cheap. Like back when CDs were like 15 bucks or something, right? I only wanted the, a couple songs that were on here and they just happened to be on this one. And uh, I think I cut this for $2, two or three bucks. So they were, it was cheap. It was just on clear out. So I bought it because I had a laser disc player. I thought this would be kind of cool that I could uh, play a CD video. Just something to have for my laser disc players. And I bought, then I also bought uh, one called Flight of the Dream Team, which is just a skydiving video. I it's it's probably in with my CDs. Couldn't find that one in the in the five minutes I looked for this, so I just grabbed this one. Anyway, just to kind of to show that off because I don't really have a lot to show you on this machine. It's working. I'll load that big disc again, and we'll take a look at that. And uh, I'll close this one off. It's not going to be a long video. Uh, the reason I've dragged this out is because I've got some laser discs that uh, I'm thinking it might be time to digitize a few of my discs that I want to keep before the discs themselves deteriorate. Because, uh, look at that thing spin. So I figured I'd drag this out, or drag a player out, and just digitize some of the discs that I've got. 
So there it's playing. This is this the uh, the CAV version. I think this is the CAV. Yeah, this is the CAV version. And it, it has multiple tracks on it as well. If we go over to the... This was the, the first the promo thing at the beginning. If I change tracks here... Who is this? Who is in concert on this demo? Is it Genesis? It might be Genesis. Or Phil Collins, one of the two. Yeah, Genesis, so uh, that's about all I can play of that. <laughs> What's number three? Ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Willem. Ah, Kirk Willem. I'll be definitely uh, digitizing this stuff. Sounds like John Tesh, the music. So. Maybe not. I know they use some of his music on some of the, uh, on some of the, uh, the, the demo discs. But quality wise, it was as good as we had. I believe this is the atmosphere, could be the atmosphere air show. One of the air shows anyway. So uh, there was a snowbirds were there. That's about all I can show you on this one. I was hoping that I was going to have to do something to this unit. I, I figured, I've been sitting all these years, that something would be broken on it. But obviously, Panasonic made a pretty good laser disc player. Now, many of the analog guys out there would like to claim that laser discs were perfect and that they were the best for watching movies and stuff on but they were far from perfect a lot of them suffered from a phenomenon called laser rot which this disc has suffered from and uh, if I skip that back a bit more here there's sections of this disc that just will not play whatsoever skips and you get rolling picture like this this happens to discs if they're scratched or just from a phenomenon that was known as laser rot which was typically an interaction between the adhesive that glued the two halves of the disc together and the aluminum coating it affected the reflectivity of it and some would just get noisy and others would just go like this where the disc just would not play that's a section there that's now now you see there's there's the laser rot you can see it I don't want to play too much because I might get I don't think I'll pull copyright on the part that's rolling but I'm sure that this part here would see now it's gonna play okay a bit for a while it just affects some parts of this disc more than others But you can see it in the picture even there. The picture is just not clear. It's noisy. Now this disc, I admit, is not in the best shape. This was given to me. And uh, as you can see, there are some fine scratches. 
on the surface of the disc. That contributes partly to the noisy picture, but laser rot is uh, was a real problem. And I have a number of discs that are absolutely perfect, but they have a very noisy picture on playback just due to the actual disc itself deteriorating over the years. So I think I'm going to try on this in a future video is we'll try to clean up this disc a bit. There's a few scratches. I don't know that that's causing this or not, but I think I'm going to try to polish those scratches out. I just have to figure out how to do it. A mag wheel polish and, and plastic polish might do it. I'm thinking um, even Brasso or something like, in a, like a, a very fine metal polish might uh, bring some of these scratches out or bring them down to the point where they're not causing a problem. I don't know whether this is the disc itself or it's caused by some light scratches in the surface but again this disc I received just like this and it's never played. So now you've seen my laser disc player I think we'll try to repair this disc in a future video as I don't have any material to do it with right now. I'm gonna have to get some so we'll we'll deal with that. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.